Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this topic is quick revision of microwave tubes. So let us start the session. First part is high frequency limitations of the conventional tube. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. What are the high frequency limitations of the conventional tubes and how it can be uh, avoided, how it can be minimized. <clears throat> so first limitation is lead inductance and inter electrode capacitance effect. As the frequency increases, if the frequency uh, becomes more than 1 gigahertz, then the capacitance between the electrodes as well as lead inductance of the wire increases. So in this case, at the higher frequencies, the real part of the admittance, RE means real part, real part of the input admittance is very high because of which operating frequency of the tube is reduced. So it will affect the performance of the tube to avoid this limitation, reduce the lead length and electrode area. Second limitation is transit time effect. Basically transit time is the time taken by the electrons to move from cathode to anode. It is denoted by tau and it is given by d by v0 where d is the distance between anode and cathode. v0 is the velocity of electrons. At microwave frequencies, at very high frequencies, the value of this transit time is large so electron causes back and forth oscillations. It may happen that some of the electrons may uh, return back to the cathode. <clears throat> so remedy for this is accelerate electron beam with high uh, DC voltage and it should be followed by the voltage modulation process. Third is gain bandwidth product. We know that at the resonant condition, higher gain is obtained, but the gain bandwidth product is fixed. So because of which bandwidth is reduced. <clears throat> so to avoid this, use re-entrant cavities or make use of the slow wave structure. Then RF losses, radio, radio frequency losses, at higher frequencies, the current confines to a small uh, cross-sectional area. So current is limited for only small cross-sectional area. So as the frequency increases, these RF losses also increases. Uh, to reduce these losses, increase the size of the conductor. Then dielectric losses. We know that different kinds of insulating materials are used usually glass envelopes are used so because of which the dielectric losses takes place you can reduce such losses uh, by reducing the surface area of the glass envelope and last type of uh, limitation is radiation losses whenever the dimension of a wire approaches towards the lambda that is the operating wavelength then it emits radiations which is unavoidable uh, effect and it reduces the efficiency of the microwave tube. So these losses can be reduced by making use of a proper silting. Now let us discuss the construction and working of two cavity clastron amplifier. This is the constructional diagram of two cavity clastron amplifier. It has two cavities. So input cavity which is called a puncture cavity and output cavity which is called a catcher cavity. This cathode emits electron beam. Focusing electrodes are used to focus the electron beam towards the collector terminal. More positive voltage is applied at the collector terminal, so it produces acceleration of the electron beam. The gap between input and output cavity is called drift space. The input voltage, RF input voltage, which is to be amplified, is applied at the input cavity at gap X as shown in this diagram. <clears throat> now consider this diagram. Actually, I have drawn some lines. Whenever the RF input signal is not applied, then the corresponding lines are as shown. These are the lines where the slope of the each line remains constant. This each line represents the distance between X and Y. That is the drift space. Now, consider that RF input signal is applied. Refer electron B. Electron B is at slightly uh, high positive potential potential compared to electron A or compared to the original position. Uh, this electron B can be considered as a reference electron. So since electron B is having some positive voltage, the slope of the line corresponding to this electron B, this line I am talking about, is changed. That means acceleration of electron B takes place. Electron A was passed before passing electron B because this was this is present earlier compared to electron B and electron A is present at the negative half cycle of this uh, waveform. So 
whenever this electron a is passed since it is present at the negative uh, side it is having certain negative voltage there will be retardation of this electron whereas for electron b there is acceleration after that electron c is passed electron c is again at uh, some uh, or much larger uh, potential compared to electron a and b so more acceleration will be provided to electron a in short some electrons which are passing through this drift space passing between input and output cavities are accelerated remaining electrons are retarded deaccelerated so because of this in between the cavity the faster electrons and slower electrons will catch up will get mixed up and different bunches are created actually bunching means the faster electron transfers energy to the slower electron all these bunches are collected at the output cavity and here you are getting amplified output so this is about the working of two cavity clastron amplifier the next is single cavity clastron or it is called reflex clastron the basic principle of working remains same like two cavity clastron only the difference is that in case of two cavity clastron input and output two cavities are used whereas in reflex clastron or uh, single cavity clastron only a single cavity is used <coughs> now similar to the two cavity clastron this anode produces electron beam for focusing of this electron beam focusing plates are used this is the anode it is called repeller anode because look at the connection negative of this power supply is connected to this anode so whenever electron beams are traveling through this space whenever electron reaches up to the repeller anode they are getting reflected back now the output is taken from the upper end of the cavity suppose some electrons are entering into the cavity whenever the cavity gap voltage is zero in that case there won't be any change in the speed of electrons but when this electron will travel forward and reaches up to the repeller anode this anode will cause reflection of these electrons and these electrons will again come back to the cavity. Second case, some electrons enters into the cavity whenever the cavity gap voltage is slightly positive. For such electrons, acceleration will be provided. But again, same phenomenon will take place. That means these accelerated electrons will move further, will reach to the anode, gets reflected back and again enters into the cavity back. Third case, some electrons enters into the cavity whenever the cavity gap voltage is negative for such electrons the speed will be reduced but these electrons will with reduced speed again reach uh, up to the anode and gets reflected back and enters into this cavity gap now important point is that certain electrons are getting accelerated some electrons are getting retarded there is a speed mismatch so like two cavity clastron amplifier different bunches of electrons are formed in this case the accelerating electrons takes energy from the cavity gap whereas retarding electrons gives energy to the cavity gap so always the oscillations are maintained in the cavity gap and at the output you are getting amplified uh, signal amplified output so this is about the construction and working of a reflex clastron now let us discuss the construction and working of <coughs> magnetron. It is also called cavity magnetron or cylindrical magnetron. Actually the structure is cylindrical but this is the cross-sectional view of the magnetron. At the center we have cathode. It is surrounded by number of anodes. The gap between cathode and anode is called space for interaction. This part is called anode poles. As I said, this is anode pole, this is cathode pole, so, and this gap is space for interaction. All these are anode cavities. Now, output is taken from one of the cavities. Like the earlier tubes, the cathode is used to emit electrons. There are There is an effect of two fields, effect of electric field and effect of magnetic field. So, uh, whenever the electrons are emitted by the cathode, and if the magnetic field is zero, then in that case, there is only effect of electric field. In such case, the motion of electron will be along a straight line from cathode to anode. But in the presence of magnetic field, the bending of these lines takes place. That means whenever a magnetic field is existing, then motion of electron from cathode to anode follows a curved path 
and all such electrons are captured. I mean, bunches takes place like the earlier devices and uh, such an amplified output is taken out from any one of the adored cavities. <clears throat> there is one particular condition which is called Hull cutoff condition. It is given by this equation BOCB is magnetic uh, flux density. OC stands for cutoff condition is equal to square root of 8V0. V0 is the uh, voltage between anode and cathode ME mass of electron Q is charge of electron upon B in the bracket 1 minus A square by B square where A is the radius of cathode and B is the distance between center of cathode to the edge of anode. Next important part is phase focusing effect. Just like two cavalic clastron or uh, reflex clastron, the bunching process takes place in case of magnetron also. What we discussed up till now, there is a motion of electron and this motion of electron is affected by both the fields electric as well as magnetic field. If suppose electric field is zero, then electrons which are emitted from the cathode, they will return back to the cathode as shown by path A. This will happen when electric field is zero. Another case, if electric field is applied, then motion of electron is similar to path B. That means they will uh, start moving from cathode they will move towards anode following the curved path. Now, such motion of electrons which are following this path B, they are called favored electrons. These electrons produce sustained oscillations in the interaction space between anode and cathode. Actually, this process causes retardation or acceleration of some of the electrons. So different bunches are formed. This is called cloud of electrons and all these bunches or cloud of electrons rotate in anticlockwise direction along the around the cathode. This effect is called phase focusing effect. Now let us discuss one important concept that is concept of slow wave structure. There are two major parts. One is electron beam and another is RF field. There is a speed mismatch between the two. So slow wave structures are used to reduce down the speed of field so that there will be proper interaction. This is the slow wave structure which is in the form of helix. It can be in the form of a zigzag. This is called pitch, the distance between these two turns. We are using glass cylinders at upper end and lower end. The distance between them is D. Two magnets are placed so that there will be proper alignment of the electron beam. Let us say from left to right side. Now, whenever this RF field is applied, at one end of this helical coil, whenever the RF field is traveling through this, it has to travel extra distance compared to the electron beam so that there, will, there is proper interaction between electron beam and RF field. This is the major use of the slow wave structure. There is one parameter which is called phase velocity that is Vp dash which is Pc upon pi d. P is the pitch of helix, C is the speed of light. D is the distance between the two gas uh, glass cylinders. This phase velocity is also given as omega upon beta. Beta is the phase shift and omega is angular frequency which is again given by psi into C where psi is the pitch angle and C is the speed of light. There is certain uh, concept which is called a uh, group velocity. Uh, <clears throat> So it is given by V, it is denoted by VGR, which is given by DABA omega upon DABA beta. Beta is the phase shift. Important point is that the period of slow wave structure, period of this structure should be equal to the pitch of helix. This diagram shows the constructional detail of TWT that is traveling wave tube. As we discussed, this is the helical coil, which is acting as a slow wave structure. At this end, we are applying, we have placed one cathode, which is generating electron beam. These are the focusing electrodes. Two magnets are placed at upper end and at lower end of the structure, so that this electron beam, which is generated, which is given out by this cathode, will be along the axis of this structure. At the other end, we have placed one collector. More positive voltage is given to the collector, so this collector causes acceleration of this electron beam. Now at one end of the uh, this coil, helical coil, we have to apply RF input signal. So to couple RF input signal, input waveguide is used. Similarly, output waveguide is used for the collector at the output side. 
Now, the basic principle is that there should be formation of bunches of electrons so that amplification process takes place. Consider this diagram. This is the this is the graph of variation of E bar that is electric field. So this is like a sine wave whenever some electrons which are entering whenever this field is retarding this this portion indicates the field is retarding so some electrons which are entering whenever the field is retarding the speed of those electrons gets reduced and such electrons transfers their energy to the field then the field transfers its energy to the micro signal at this portion this is this is the part of field whenever the field is increasing again the electrons which are entering into this area whenever the field is entry, uh, increasing the speed gets increased they take out the energy uh, from the structure but the more number of electrons are there which are entering into the retarding field compared to the number of electrons which are entering into the accelerating field the result is that there is a there is a speed mismatch because of which uh, there is there is a formation of bunches and as we discussed in this portion more number of electrons are entering into the retarding field they are giving out the energy to the field and fields gives out energy to the micro signal so amplification process takes place as we move from one coin uh, to the another coin uh, i mean one uh, turn to the another turn the bunching process goes on increasing goes on improving and at the output you are getting amplified rf output signal so this is the way how this traveling wave tube works now let us discuss the comparison between klystron and uh, twta traveling wave tube amplifier klystron is narrow band device whereas twta is a broad band device in case of klystron uh, cavity resonators are used for the velocity modulation purpose whereas in this case cavity resonators are not used interaction is only in the cavity gap in case of a klystron whereas interaction in twta takes place along the entire length of the tube it makes use of cavities whereas twta makes use of slow wave structure output is low output is high then field related to signal in case of klystron is in the buncher cavity whereas rf signal is moving along the entire axis of the tube in twta klystrons are mainly used in laboratories whereas twta are used for high power applications like radar system so dear students that's it for quick revision session of this unit so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video